Welcome everyone. Today we'll have a special Genshin Impact roadmap prediction video. In this video, we'll have a look at the upcoming patches for patch 2.2 up to 3.0. We'll also have a look at the official information, so everything here is official. We'll go through the official YouTube information on the teasers of the characters that will be coming. We'll also go through some of the ideas about new content and also new zones in the map. We'll also go through the wikis of the new characters and also, you know, the Danger Lord. Our lesser lord Kasanut, Kasanakali, which is going to be the Denjo Arkham. We'll go through her as well. So there's a lot of information I want to go through with you guys, and all those are based on 100% official information. So over here, I have summarized all the predictions for the possible patch 2.2 rerun characters, and also followed by that, patch 2.3 to 2.4. What are the characters that might be coming, which could be Yamiko and also Goro. So we also have those characters teased in the story. I'll briefly explain why those characters might be coming for those time intervals. And finally, we'll go through patch 2.5 and also patch 2.6, with a very high chance of rerun of characters and also new regions like the Chasm, which will be revealed and also introduction of the new element, which will be Denjo. So there's a lot of good things that will be coming, and we can predict the Electro Arkham rerun around those times, because this is how Venti and also Zoli had their rerun, and also other reruns like characters like Ayaka and also Yumiya. Finally, we'll look into patch 3.0 and also 3.1, and this is when we can look into some of the laws and also stories that's revealed in the story and also on the teasers about the Lord of Wisdom or the God of Wisdom, which is the Denjo Archon, and how she is very interesting. And also the ideal character with Sayo, who is a male lens character, very interesting. And we'll go through about him as well. So there's a lot of things to go through and also the brief summary of the Archon and also her stories and also story laws. So very packed video over here. I've been doing a bit of researching and summary for those characters. And also I'm very excited to share with you guys. Now, if you guys have seen our previous video, now, if you guys have seen our previous video and also about a poll for the upcoming official roadmap, as I was making the poll, I was thinking, hey, I really want a roadmap like today. So what I did was I spent the rest of my day actually spending time to look for all the official information that can actually help me predict and also make a roadmap for the next video. So here we are. We have the next video. There's a lot of things I want to go through with you guys. And if you haven't seen the Genshin Impact YouTube official channel, definitely check it out. There's a lot of hints and also signs like the story teasers that is revealed over here and with millions of views. Now, I'm sure you guys might have seen this particular authorities a lot of times. So a majority of the framework of this prediction is based on this and even more in-game information. So what I mean by that is, if we fast forward a little bit to the site where the stories are revealed, notice here there's the look, and after that this is Mondstadt, right? After the look, the look is the ring with Nagon. But what's interesting after Nagon is that the theme character, the special character for each of the act, like in Azuma, you get to see Ayaka. And this is actually highlighting Ayaka is the themed character or the most special character for Inazuma other than the Electro Archon. And if we keep going, we're going to see the next city, which is revealed in the game and also over here on the teaser. So everything is following through on this story teaser with Samuru and also with Sayo. And Sayo is a boy, by the way. So there you go, that's Sayo. And you get to see him wearing a lens. So going from there, what I want to do is, I want to give you guys a summary. Instead of just us watching the YouTube video, I want to combine all the official information, all the wiki information, in-game information, to make a summary and to make a roadmap together. So here is the summary from the video. The Tavet chapter story teaser preview from the official YouTube channel shows that the first city, the second city, are Mondstadt and also Lewin Harbor. We have the Nemo Archon with Venti, Geo Archon with Zonli. The next was Inazuma that was revealed in patch 2.0. And this is the Electro Archon with Raiden Shogun. After that, the next city will be Samaru, which is going to be a city for the Denjo Archon, Kasanali. Now, Kasanali is introduced multiple times in the story with hints with Yamiko of introducing the traveler to her and also the next city that we'll be visiting. We can also see the next coming up cities with Fontaine, Natlin, Snaisadaya, and also Karaz, Tarada. Oh gosh, I cannot pronounce. So we actually know there's going to be eight cities in total because the final cities is where we go with Dance Leaf. And this is actually pretty nice. So if you haven't seen this particular trailer, definitely check it out. There's a lot of good information, but today we'll focus on between Inazuma and also Samuru for the patch predictions and also roadmap. Now keep in mind guys, all the information here is 100% based on official Genshin Impact 
official source and also media. I have not looked at any leaks. I have not even bothered looking at anything like that. So it's purely on my personal predictions using all the live stream, all the teasers, all the in-game footages that is provided to the players. And those are the current ones. So our focus over here will be on patch 2.2 to 3.0. Now the first thing to notice guys is that between patch 1.0 to 1.6, there were two patches, not including 1.0 of course. So it is likely going to be six patches from 2.1 to 2.6, and then we'll be going into 3.0. So we're assuming that Genshin Impact will follow the same pattern from the patch 1.0 to 1.6. There may be small changes, but currently the prediction is also based on those chapters. Because as I go through the roadmap of the predictions, what you're going to notice is there is seem to be a very good marketing perspective and also a good pattern for the reruns, new chapters, new content, the bridging content for the next zone, like Inazuma and also the Little Islands, and then there will be reruns of the existing Inazuma characters before we go into 3.0. So having six patches between those massive patches is actually a good timing in terms of you know getting money from players and also giving us enough excitement and also different events. So now coming over to a roadmap. The first patch we want to have a look is going to be patch 2.2. We're currently in 2.1 right now. And the first thing I'm predicting is myself, of course, guys, is that this is going to be a massive rerun patch. We have had rerun patches before. Previously, we have had rerun patches with Venti and also Child with a double rerun with a Monster Festival. Notice how the theme for 2.1 at the end of the theme, where actually there's a hint for the Lering Harbor Festival. And there's a lot of talks about the Moonchess Festival matching the Chinese festival. And with the Moonchess Festival, you know who's going to be coming, right? Highly likely the game rerun will be coming very soon like this. Now the next thing we want to notice is, usually characters are teased by the official media now, and the only character that was revealed was Toma. And he is believed by most of us in the community to be a 4-star character. What that means is, the 4 characters that may be coming with a 5-star rerun will be Ganyu, will be up. Alberto and also Xiao and also Hu Tao. Those are the characters with the most high chances. Now I have made a video before to talk about my predictions on those characters. And I do think Alberto and also Xiao will be most likely to be the second rerun after Gengu. So we know, you know, we know it's likely Thomas is gonna be a four-star pile lancer, and you know, he shows he's a pile and also he's a lance user. And from that, what we can kind of predict is the first thing we want to predict for 2.2 is that there is likely going to be a big event, very similar to the Monster Festival. This one will be a Living Harbor Festival, and this will be related to Tama plus another character in the first banner. And likely the second banner will be similar to Child's banner, which might not give us a lot of sales, but purely for the double rerun. So I'm thinking there may be a chance of a hype for the first release of the patch with Ganyu and also Tama on the same banner. Or this might be the case to split out the cells for the banners. Maybe we'll have Ganyu on one banner, then Tama plus any of those three characters on the second banner. In terms of the marketing perspective, just a brief summary. Shao does have a higher chance of being on the banner because he's more popular as a DPS. Followed by that, I do think Alberto have the best timing because he was an early character in patch 1.2. It's like his time, right? And as you guys know, we also had our battle birthday official art. And it's over here on our community pictures over here. You can see the beautiful official fan art for our battle. And in case you guys are wondering, our battle love tiny desserts. And that's why there's a lot of cakes instead of a massive birthday cake. You look at the little puff, little muffins, a little chocolate cakes, cheesecake. He loved tiny desserts. And this fun art looks really good. And what I was thinking is maybe those birthday timings and also fun arts is like leading us to the Alberto rerun. Because notice how the, the birthday is timed in such a way people are like, oh, there's Alberto in the game. Oh, Alberto is really cool, right? Oh, we haven't had a five star Geo character. Oh, maybe Alberto is coming. <laughs> so notice how they bring Alberto back into action. So maybe it's Ganyu, Tama plus Alberto for the rerun. Now, patch 2.2 will likely going to be a massive rerun patch. But what's going to happen after that is, between patch 2.3 and also 2.4, it is highly likely we'll be getting new Inazuma content. This is the way with patch 1.2 with the, the snow mountains and the dragon spine. So notice how the rotation is a little different. We had a massive event first, then we're going to have the release of additional content. Now, there is likely going to be two ways to do this. 
whether the content will be permanent for the islands and all the content will be a limited time content like the Patron by 6 with the special islands. So we're not sure at the moment, but it is likely we'll have more zones to Inazuma, likely at least one more island or maybe special zones. And what I'm thinking of my predictions is that there's a lot of folklore with Inazuma, a lot of the legacies, a lot of storytelling. So maybe we're going to see some Inazuma folklores or Japanese themed laws and also palace, or then also special cities. So those could be quite interesting. And for patch 1.3 and then also patch, so for patch 2.3 to patch 2.4, it is highly likely we'll get new content. And with those new content, we also know that we haven't been getting new characters for 2.2, right? So the character that is highly likely going to come between the new content, which also fits the palace and also the Madden Shire thing, and also our rebel leader with Goro and the general, is going to be Yamiko and also Goro. So coming over to some of the screenshots in the game. We can see that Toma was first introduced when we came to Inazuma. And you know the next patch Toma came in, right? So after that, we can see there is going to be Goro that was introduced and also there is Yamiko. Those characters models are ready <laughs> and those voice actors are ready. <laughs> Why is that? I can 100% be sure because they're in the game, guys. They're already talking to us. The characters are moving. Those characters are designed to be sold on the banners. And notice this is a common character. This is the character they want to sell. Notice his cute ears, his hair, and also his eyes. Notice that he, he is ready. And with Yamiko, yeah, you can even see her vision. It's on the side. But so, the, uh, her vision is over here. So you can see the purple vision. And I do believe those characters have a very high chance of coming between those patches. Because after the rerun patch, likely we're going to see new character patches during those time with new content. Notice this is a good timing to give new content and also to bring the players more excited about the, the content of the game. And after that, what's going to be interesting is we're going to have patch 2.5 and also patch 2.6. Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news, and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. And by this time, we're likely going to be preparing for the next new city with Dendro. And also, we usually have a bridging content. The bridging content is something that introduces us to the new city and also new themes, with different stories, with different folklores, and also lead up to the Archon story of the next city. Now, what's interesting is, if we come back into the game, and I took away the volume over here for recording, so if we come back into the game, we have always seen the so-called the chasm. And after the chasm, notice here, if you zoom in too much, you won't be able to see the chasm. I agree, you can. Oh, back then, if you zoom in too much, you can't see the chasm, guys. Now you can. It's, oh, if you zoom out too much, you can't see it. So the chasm is over here. This is the area that I'm thinking will be unlocked for the bridging content. And yes, we have talked about this multiple times. And we have had a lot of hints and a lot of story laws in the Ring Harbor about the Dendro characters. And this is when the Denju characters were coming with the Yao Yao and also with Baiju. Now, the Denju characters, you know, Yao Yao and Baiju, we have seen and we have heard of them in the game as well. It is a very good timing for a new bridging content with new characters and also to get the players excited because they will need to build up the hype for the new patch. So it may be even be a chance for the new Denju element to be introduced to the game before the new patch. But this might wait for patch 3.0. We're not sure for now. But currently we only have six elements. So adding Denju into the element, we're going to have new actions, new combinations, and also new resonance. And, you know, we have had a video to talk about the possible buff to the electro characters. Because they don't have the best reactions to any of the three major elements. You know, Pyro, Cryo, and also Hydro, they have really good melt and also vaporize. So Denju don't have those. One way to buff Denju is to introduce now, one way to buff Electro is to introduce Dendro plus Electro reactions and give them a good multiplier or maybe a good damage multiplier. So if this is the case, we can get a buff to the Electro characters by introducing a new element. And if this is done, you know, around those patch time or maybe at patch 3.0, I think this is like a two birds with one stone. Because by making the Dendro and also Electro characters stronger, this is also a perfect timing for the Electro Archon rerun. I'm so smart, right? <laughs> okay, those are the patterns of the of the events. If you guys remember, Venti had his rerun, Zoni had his rerun, a few patches after their official first banner. 
And what better time to buff the Electro characters or maybe even Electro Archon and with Dendro characters or with the Dendro bridging content and then to make an Electro Archon rerun. This is a good timing because by then you'll be four patches since this patch to have the Electro Archon rerun. And by then, you know, we'll be preparing for the new content. So might as well get the best rerun of the characters in Azuma before we go into the new city, right? So likely we're going to have the Electro Archon rerun, maybe Ayaka and also maybe Yumiya. Ayaka will definitely come. She's like Ganyu. So that's why we're having a Ganyu rerun around this time. Very likely we're having a Ganyu rerun around patch 2.2. Then we'll break it up. Then we'll come over to the Ayaka rerun for the other really good cryo DPS. And as I was making this video, as I was looking at the information for those, it makes really good sense, right? Notice we have massive reruns, we have new content, then we have new characters, then we have bridging content, new danger introduction, danger characters, and also danger element, and also a buff and also adjustment to the danger and also electric reactions with the electric icon rerun. So everything fits, and this matches perfectly for the new patch for patch 3.0. And this is when we come to Samuro with the Denjo Archon Lesser Lord Castanelli. So Lesser Lord Castanelli was mentioned multiple times. Although we don't have the most information on her as regards to her fine art and everything, what we can see from the official teaser is that this will actually talk about her. So this particular line of quotes from Dan Sleeve, the person that's speaking about the introduction of the cities is Dan Sleeve. So by quoting from Dan Sleeve over here, it is said she is the god of wisdom and the enemy is wisdom itself and she really favors our knowledge and it is located in the desert this is a city of the scholars and they went crazy with knowledge and now things get a little absurd and this is going to be a theme for the new city we won't have enough information for now but it seems quite interesting notice in the zoom is about eternity and it's a vision 100 degree Maybe with the God of Wisdom and you know the Dendro Icon, the scholars and also the academy, the schools, we're gonna have a lot of puzzles and things will get very interesting. They maybe even you know chess games and maybe fine events and also new themes for the game. So very excited for this. On top of that, if we come back over here, look at who's that handsome boy, right? <laughs> so we do know the mascot or the special character that is themed to come with the patch will be Sayo. Now Sayo is teased in the official trailer very similar to Yaka. So here are some of my better predictions. I know we're going for like six months ahead of time. Because we know Ayaka came with patch 2.0 and followed by the Electro Archon, so we also can use a similar pattern. Shio might come on the first banner on patch 3.0, and then the Dendro Archon may be following on patch 3.1. So notice we're following the similar pattern for patch 2.0 and also 2.1. So in that sense, if you guys want to save for special style, or if you guys want to save for the Dendro Archon, this may be a good time to consider saving some Primal Gems. You don't have to save a lot because we have like 6 months, but maybe put 1000 gems aside each patch and you'll have a few thousand gems when this comes out. So let me know what you guys think about those predictions. I do think we have onto something and those are personal predictions keep in mind guys so we watch the live stream we use more information we make more videos on the predictions now because we're talking about the danger outcome i thought maybe we'll do a summary of all of official information of the danger outcome and i'm sure most of us are very curious so all those are coming from the wiki which came from the in-game footages and also in-game notes about the danger outcome she is said to be among the youngest of the seven the existing seven archons in the game or in the world of Tevet. Now her real name is going to be Tassanelli. She is often called the Flower Archon or the Dendro Archon or she's called the Lesser Lord. Now, similar to Raiden Shogun with her pursuit of eternity, with Samaru and also with the Archon, there is an extreme pursuit of wisdom and also knowledge. And this is going to be reflected with the multiple theme of the game. And this has been built up in the game and also in the story laws. So if we come over to some of the quotes of the story laws, Castanelli is first mentioned in chapter 1 with Zonli and also Ganyu about the God of Wisdom. Now Ganyu also mentioned that she is the youngest with only 500 years old, when Zonli is the oldest over 6,000 years old. He's like 12 times older than her. <laughs> Zonli is such a grandpa, right? Now, Lisa also mentioned that she actually visited Samaru with the Academy for two years, and she left because the scholars and also the academic people were too extreme with wisdom and also use of knowledge and she came back to become a librarian with Mondstadt, with more freedom. So 
there seems to be a big hint about having academy and also special university buildings at Samaru. And a lot of the scholars seem to be counselors of the kings and also of the nobles. So they have a lot of powers over there in the city. So similar to the samurais in Inazuma, likely we're going to see a lot of scholars giving some fancy talks and also nobles about knowledge and about wisdom. And the knowledge seems to be a little skewed towards the wrong way to be used. This is also mentioned in the game with Yamiko. She talked about Samaru as the treatment for knowledge as a resource. So the knowledge is used maybe a commodity, maybe a way of status. And this is too truly inexplicit. This is too overdone. And what she mean by that is this is getting over overhand. And she's wondering whether this is developed by the Denjo Archon herself. Maybe this is like a you know, similar to Raiden Shogun and also her vision hunt. This whole knowledge focus is too much for the Archon and she's not doing this properly. And this will be the center theme, center theme of the Archon as we travel over here to the new city. Now, by the end of the discussion, Yao also suggests that the traveler to venture to Samaru as the next city and also to speak out to the Denju Archon. So, you know, the whole story is leading towards the Denju Archon and this is quite exciting. Because, you know, some of our predictions is that the Denjo Archon may be a first healer Archon. Right, right guys? So, notice that Venti doesn't heal, Zoni doesn't heal, he provides a big shield. Raiden Shogun gives energy. So, what is going to be interesting in the game? Whether you get more damage, well, Venti kind of do that, you know, Zoni helps with that. So, more damage might not be the case. Maybe the Denjo Archon or the Flower Archon can be a healer. So, let me know. What are her skills? What do you guys think? Or maybe she can be a poisoner. Or maybe she can poison people with knowledge. <laughs> so a lot of things we can look into. When we get more information, I'll let you guys know. So super excited because <laughs> as I was making the poll, I was like, hey, everyone wants a roadmap. I really want one now too. But no one's giving us a roadmap anytime soon. <laughs> so I was like, I'll make a roadmap myself. So all the information here are official information. And I merely have summarized all of them into categories with different timings, with the knowledge we have from the previous patches, how things used to work and how the banners run. And then using some of my intuitions and also some of the marketing insights, we can predict some of the banner of the characters with different rerun, different content. Let me know what you guys think about the Electro account and about our predictions for the future content. I'm getting pretty good at this. <laughs> so I should be working for MiHoYu, right? I'm pretty good with marketing, right? So thank you so much for watching again, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and do leave a comment. Let me know what, what you're most excited about. I can make more story and also law summaries about the Electro Archon or maybe upcoming content. Maybe the special content with the Dentro characters or maybe the in new Inazuma content. Because I did hear there might be special Jap Japanese palace and with a special turtle lore. <laughs> I'll look into that. So those are pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to be back making videos. Because when I get excited about something, I want to do a lot of research and I want to make a video. And now I can. I'm so happy to be back and I do want to make more videos for us if my voice is okay. <laughs> Still seeing doctors about that. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for your support, guys. And see you guys on the next video. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips, and news and event updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with catching and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.